G'day, Martin here. So today I'm out in my day job, got the growth hag hat on, not the farmer hat. And uh, we're out where we've had this uh, foliar fur trial out in a improved pasture near Bingra. Um, now the site's looking really good, really good. Actually a bit too good. I'm not sure if we'll pick up any differences for a couple of reasons. Mainly just because of how good this pasture is and the growers use a lot of manure across the place and uh, whacking on a whole heap of nutrition in such a concentrated form may actually um, negate the foliar effects, but we'll push on, we'll go through and we'll, um, yeah, try and suss out if there are any differences and what sort of differences there are. I just sort of crouched down here in one of my wheel tracks just to try and give you a bit of an idea of um, the amount of pasture that's here. It's knee high on me in some spots and uh, it's composition. So as you can see, we mainly got a white clover coming through uh, along with some prairie grass. There's a bit of oats in here and there's a little bit of chicory getting about. So really nice pasture, quite a lot of volume here and the quality would have to be through the roof on it. Uh, we are doing feed tests on some of these dry matter cuts, but I would imagine, you know, we would have a stack of energy in here, stack of protein. Um, yeah, he's a really good operator, this bloke. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident that we'll, we'll see some pretty good, uh, good results in the feed tests, if nothing else. Right, so the way we're going to do these assessments is we're actually going to physically do the cuts. Uh, out here we've got, you can see those pegs there behind me, they're the different treatments. We've got 10 treatments replicated three times. And uh, yeah, as I said, we're, we're physically going to cut them. Got my little Ryobi shears here and uh, a one by one metre rule, which given the amount of pasture we've got here, I may even have to cut it down to half metre by metre but, um, and do the mats from there. But yeah, basically the reason why we're gonna do actual physical cuts instead of using say a pasture ruler or a rising plate metre is just for the accuracy. Those rising plate metres and, uh, um, and pasture rulers work really well if it's calibrated to the actual pasture that you're in or a single species Years ago in a previous job, we tried to speed up doing these forage cuts by swapping to a rising plate meter in a series of oats trials, forage oats, and we went to swap over the, um, the, the calibrate, sorry, we went to calibrate the rising plate meter to the oats, so we went through to rising plate meter readings and then went through and uh, took the actual physical cuts when I graphed them up to try and work out what that calibration line was, uh, it just looked like I'd shot the graph with a shotgun. There were dots everywhere, there was zero calibration. Like we could not come up with, with any repeatable pattern. And that's because some plants were much lower, but a lot dense and produced a whole heap of uh, bulk and dry matter. Some plants were really stalky, some varieties were really stalky and uh, had a lot more air between them, space between them and really didn't produce that dry matter. So uh, yeah, that's why we go in and do it the slow, painful way with the shears. Anyway, enough talking and I'm into it. Okay, so what we've got here is our cut little square. Um, yeah, fairly dense. Took a fair bit more cutting than I thought. And anyway, I've only got another uh, 29 of these to go. But we've got a heap, heap of pasture here. Uh, so we'll get that in a bag and then we'll weigh that out this afternoon. Take a sub sample from that and send it off for a dry matter screening.
ready. It's now 12 o'clock, but all the samples are cut. Just need to tag them, put them in the back of the ute, take them home and weigh them. Let the easy work begin. It's bagged, tagged, loaded in the ute. I'm off for a counter meal. See you next time.